why I chose this topic was it came on the back of something Arini said to me, well said to us when we were all together, and Arini talked about wanting to feel invisible when she walked down the street, yeah. um, and just to merge with other women and not stand out in any way. And it made, and it just made me think about my own experiences of visibility and invisibility. But for me, not in terms of gender identity, but around sexual identity. Because if I walk down the street holding hands with a girlfriend, the world sees me as lesbian. People talk about my relationship as a lesbian relationship. Yeah, I'm not lesbian, and I don't feel like I'm in a lesbian relationship because I think that makes you know two lesbians need to be in a lesbian relationship. I'm in a same-sex relationship, or I'm with a woman, or I've got a female partner, or I've got a girlfriend. But um, it's not my experience of being in a lesbian relationship. The same goes for with a man. I'm walking down the street with a man, I hold my hands with him. The world sees me as straight, and I'm not. The world defines my relationship as straight, and that's not my experience. I'm with a man, I'm in a different gendered relationship, or oh, I've you know, got a male partner, but I'm not in a heterosexual relationship. So this is one aspect of where bisexuality is erased depending on the gender of the person that you're with. So, the, I've kind of divided this presentation into three parts. The first part defines bisexuality, what looks at what it is and what it isn't. The second part looks at the kind of murky, ugly world of biphobia, because I think biphobia is really misunderstood and is often ignored or just not taken very seriously, but it can have profound impact on bisexual people. And the biggest part of the presentation will be looking much more specifically at what the relationship therapists, particularly us as LGBT or GSD relationship therapists, need to be aware of when we're working with um, bisexual clients, or bisexual clients in general, but bisexual clients in relationships. The limitations of the presentation, I'm not going to be talking about transgendered bisexuality. Everything I say here will, be, will refer to someone who's transgendered, or cisgendered and is bisexual, but transgender people have uniquely different experiences as well, and we haven't got enough time for me to cover that, cover, you know, or do justice to that. I'm also not going to be talking about bisexuals who are in relationships with other bisexuals, so bi couple. Um, this this presentation is really specifically looking at bisexual people in relationship with a monosexual person. Monosexual person, obviously being a lesbian or gay or heterosexual person. Um, I'm also not going to particularly cover bisexuals in poly relationships where there's multiple genders. So the bisexual people I'm talking to, the clients that I'm thinking about particularly, will be in monogamous relationships, open relationships, maybe poly relationships, but with, with only one gender. So let me start with this image. Does anyone know what this is? Anyone seen it before? Mm -hmm. I've seen the colours, yeah, the flag colours. It's, do you know what the flag is? The bi flag. Yeah. They have, yeah. So most of you hadn't, and I actually mm. hadn't, <laughs> until quite recently. Um, so this is, yeah, the bisexual pride flag, which a uh, bisexual activist called Michael Page designed in 1998. And the colours represent, well, the pink represents female, the blue represents male, and the merged colour represents the possible you know, gender diversity and also attraction to more than one gender. Obviously, the male-female inter, interlinked mm -hmm. sign indicates the kind of fluidity of gender attraction for bisexuals. Now, what's interesting about this flag is that each, each bi flag could be slightly different. So sometimes the pink is bigger, or smaller, and the blue is bigger, and the merged colour is bigger, and that's to signify the variation of a bisexual person's um, sense of being bi. Some people are way more romantically or sexually attracted to one gender than another. Um, this, there is a real variation for bisexuals. Then we have, oops, this flag, which, anyone see this one? Yeah. This is the pansexual flag much more recently introduced. 
Latin. It's this one. I love hearts, not parts. It's, it's interesting, the hearts and parts, because I was thinking about how that really is the reality for a lot of people. The desire, the romantic or sexual desire is irrelevant of gender. But for many people, including myself, the parts are quite important. <laughs> you know, and it's part of, you know, attraction that can be towards um, a gendered part of someone. So, some people that, that's appropriate or you know sums them up and others it doesn't but yeah the pink obviously female the yellow representing gender diversity and the or gender variation with blue, blue male um, but let's look at the terms that are mainly used so you may get someone coming into your consulting room who defines as bisexual um, and bisexual as a term the actual term means I mean bi means two and so, which is why there's a lot of controversy about, or, or some controversy about the term being used now when, we, when we're aware of so much gender variation, um, there have been way more genders than two. Yes. But the actual term comes from the 19, let me look, 1892, it was a, sci it's a scientific term, and it means to contain male and female sexual parts. So actually, it's not particularly relevant anyway. But the, I think many of us that call ourselves bisexual today, it's because we were out way back when it was the only term used. Pansexual wasn't around, or any of these other terms weren't particularly used apart from queer. Um, and so I know for me, myself, I have an affection for that term because it, it sums up my sense of identity. Um, probably if I came out today, I'd call myself pansexual because it would, it would, the word itself represents more and more gender. But bisexuals now, the more modern way of understanding bisexuality is an attraction to more than one gender, just that. It doesn't talk about the gender, the gender as only male or only female, cis, cis male or cis female. Some people define themselves in the bisexual, call themselves bisexual, but might say that they're straight oriented bisexuals. Some will say lesbian oriented bisexuals or, or gay oriented. Some people might call themselves bi curious if they haven't acted on their feelings. Some people might just define themselves as bi dykes. And in the ace community, some asexuals will call themselves bi romantic, which will sum up much more um, appropriately their own feelings towards various genders. If we think about attraction, it's on three axes there's feeling, behaviour, and identity. And you can have sexual or romantic feelings towards more than one gender. You might act on that and have sex with someone or be romantically involved with someone with more than one gender. And it might also be a part of your identity. And which, you know, for me, the, the term bisexual is definitely a part of my identity as well because it represents or sums up more than just my sexual um, desires or my, or my romantic inclinations. It's also kind of how it represents how I am in the world. So my sense of being free in the world, of being um, not needing to conform or question what's conventionally the mainstream, I guess. So for me, that's why this term, you know, feels most most relevant to who I am. Other terms: pansexual, pan and omni, both mean all. So it's people with who have got the capacity to be attracted to any gender variation. And poly obviously means many. So sexually attracted to many gender variations, ambisexual, ambi is referring to ambiguous, so someone who's not particularly wanting to define in any one particular character, um, label. Gender queer is quite a political term, I mean all of these are political terms because once you stop using the, term, the word heterosexual, it's political. So all of these are, but gender queer in particular. And sexually fluid are for people that um, prefer not to have a label and experience themselves as much more fluid and um, so these are some of the words that someone might present to you with. So I think I wanted to look at defining bisexuality and I wanted to start with asking all of you this question. So if you think about all the people you have been romantically and sexually and or sexually attracted to, were they all of the same gender? So, just asking this question, if anyone can answer yes to that, if everyone they've been sexually or romantically attracted to was of the same gender, can you put your hands up? 
Wow. <laughs> We're all both interested. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. There's no one's put their hands up, and yet I know that not everyone here would take would use that term bisexual or pansexual to define who they are. So you could, if you wanted to, to you know, use this term, bisexual or pansexual, it could fit your experience. But obviously what we're talking about is, is also is identity. And so for I imagine for some of you that you're going to experience yourself as gay men or lesbian or um, I don't know, some other kind of sexual identity and, and not want to include this or, or know your identity is fixed. Actually, let me ask you, what, what does that mean to hold a man, monosexual label but know that you've been attracted to more than one gender? I suppose it's where I feel I am now. <clears throat> so, yes, it doesn't exclude where I might go in the future or where I may have been in the past, but it, uh, it's where I am now and have been for a significant period in my adult life. Mm. So, the vast majority of it. So it's, that's where it's okay, but it's this sort of the personal thing, the sort of romantic attraction is is a primary thing in terms of its sort of savings from the motivation to become engaged with someone. Um, so but that's not to say that just walking down the road I just saw someone and thought, mm, cute. Um, so there's it sort of it, it wavers. Um, but politically I'd say I'm queer. Mm. So that's mm. Mm. I'm more likely to say queer right. and um, I've had relationships with trans men, so parts not people, mm. but I know I'm attracted to masculinity. Mm. So I'm more androphilic mm. than gay, probably. Yeah. So yeah. I guess I could fit into the pansexual banner, but um, I, yeah, I would use queer. Mm. Mm. I, I, think it, I think I'm a lesbian. I mean, I've been quite uh, stable in my, in my attraction. Um, but that doesn't mean, I mean, I, I remember particularly in my youth that uh, I was particularly attracted to older men. I mean, and I don't know, I mean, never physically uh, or sexually, but, uh, but in some way romantically. I mean, I think it was a bond that went just be beyond friendship or this kind of father-son relationship. So, so yeah, it, I cannot say that that would not ever happen. Yeah. And the other thing is, it's definitely, uh, politically, I believe I'm clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me look at this definition then, which is a bisexual activist called Robin Fox. I think that's how I say her name. Mm. She, she writes, I call myself bisexual because I acknowledge that I have in myself the potential to be attracted romantically and or sexually to people of more than one sex and or gender, not necessarily at the same time, not necessarily in the same way, and not necessarily to the same degree. I really like this definition because it feels much more inclusive of all our different ways that we could be found with bisexual queer. <coughs> so now let me talk about the ugly world of homophobia, of biphobia. Mm -hmm. Biphobia. <laughs> Don't invisibilize. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> By calling it <Sorry>. homophobia. <laughs> well, it's so rarely talked about, <laughs> even in my head. Um, Biphobia is an aversion, an irrational fear, it's discrimination and it's negative stereotyping of bisexuals or the bisexual community by people of any sexual identity. And biphobia, we can break down into five categories. First one is by, by invisibility, which reflects the kind of title that I chose. Um, it's sometimes you'll hear it talked about as bisexual erasure. So an example of this is where contributions of bisexuals are totally erased from our history, our culture, from society. Uh, um, Freddie Mercury, who is known as a gay man, is talked about as a gay man, had sexual and romantic relationships with men and women. Marlene Dietrich, how do I say her last name? Dietrich. 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 Yeah. She had relationships with men and women, but is regarded as a heterosexual woman. And there's so many examples of people who could easily be experienced as bisexual, but have been claimed either way as a monosexual in some way. 
Um, we've got a more recent example. I don't know if anyone watches EastEnders, but um, I do because a friend of mine acts on it. And there is a there's a relationship between two women, and one is a lesbian who, who the characters are lesbian on EastEnders, very out and proud, and her new girlfriend was in was married to a man, has had sex with two men since she's been with in the relationship with this woman. Yet all references to her are as a lesbian. I mean, it's quite homophobic references to her. Never mind the biphobic erasure. Mm -hmm. But it's all you know when you when you became lesbian. When she obviously in this se in this series is attracted to men and women still, or at least attracted to one woman and attracted to more than one man. So there's some examples. And the other examples of bisexual invisibility is expecting bisexuals to identify as gay, straight, or um, gay, straight or lesbian when they're in monogamous relationships with whatever gender they're with. Or it's referring to lesbian and gay relationships or, or straight relationships when you know, one of the party or both people um, are bisexual. Um, it's believing that bisexuality is a bridge to becoming gay and lesbian. You know, and for some people it is an aspect of their sexual change or development, but it isn't for all, you know. Some people are bisexual for life. I really hope I am. But, um, so far, so good. Um, so that's kind of, there's some of the examples of where bisexuality is erased. Bisexual denial is much more, well, it's pretty explicit by the term. It's the literally believing bisexuality doesn't exist. We do not exist. There is no such thing as me. There's no such thing as any of you that have more than one attra attraction to more than one gender. It's you're gay, you're straight, or you're lying, is the expression you're here. Mm -hmm. Or people will think that some groups can be bisexual and some groups can't. So women can be bisexual, no way men can be. White people might be bisexual, no way black people can be. So some people hold these really odd kind of views about um, groups of people. Or we're, it's talked about as having a gay side or a straight side, you know, which is ridiculous. Like, what side is going on when I'm with a woman or a man? Um, or obviously, we're, we're talked about, and this is very, very common, as we're, we're confused, we haven't made our mind up. So, we, you know, it's completely denying that it can be a, a solid sexual orientation of its own. Bisexual marginal, marginalization or exclusion may be when a service refers to lesbian and gay but doesn't include bisexual or it a service refers to LGBT but totally ignores the different issues and needs mm -hmm. of a bisexual. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be that a bisexual gets turned away and allowed into a gay club, particularly if the bisexual person is with someone of a different gender to themselves mm -hmm. and they're not experienced, you know, they're not allowed in. Um, I had that experience once. Um, or it's not challenging biphobic comments, but challenging homophobic comments. So really demonstrating where, you know, what you consider more important. Or it's allowing jokes to be made that mock bisexuals, but really not allowing any jokes that mock gay people, mm. or well, queer people, or straight people. Double, di double discrimination, what do I mean by that? Discrimination from gay and straight people. Yeah, absolutely, mm. yeah. Mm. And I can a really strong example of this happened to me when I was in, well, probably about, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago when London Pride was really good and was held in parks, not in yeah. Soho streets. And there was a London Pride in Rockwell Park in Brixton. And I lived there with my girlfriend at the time. And we got almost daily homophobic abuse. You know, kissing of teeth, it's the looks, the comments. Um, it, so I never felt very safe in Brixton. But this day, it was amazing. I was with, I could hold her hands, I could kiss my girlfriend. No one bothered, everyone around me was looking at me with fondness rather than hostility. <coughs> and I felt, and I was feeling really good, really safe. Rona Cameron was comparing, so she's a le lesbian comedian. She gets up on the stage and she said, welcome, she said, welcome to Pride. And she said, all the gay men, all the gay men here put your hands up. And they put, you know, lots of men put their hands up. She said, Welcome to Pride. She said, all the lesbians here, put your hands up. And lots of hands went up. She said, welcome to Pride. And she said, all the bisexuals, put your hands up. About ten of us, put our hands up. She said, fuck off. <gasps> oh, no. oh, really? oh, it still hits me. Yeah. Oh, and I just, 
in that moment, all my friends were laughing, my girlfriend was laughing, the whole of Pride seemed to be laughing. Oh and I felt, I'm not safe anywhere. You know, I'm not accepted on the streets of Brixton. Um. I'm not accepted in the gay, in the gay world. Um, yeah, I can feel, I actually mm -hmm. feel, feel it every time I think about it. And she so, wasn't sort of undermining that sort of, that sort of phobia within the gay community? No, 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 she's blatantly biphobic. I don't know if she still mm. is. I, I know a few kind of, I know some, I know an ex-girlfriend of hers who's told me a few things about Rona, but um, she's blatantly half biphobic. Mm. Hopefully things might have changed, but she was then. Even my, my girlfriend calls me dirty bisexual. Dirty bisexual. Mm. Yeah. We're going to talk about biphobic abusive terms. Mm. And the thing that I find really so extraordinary is that we are all discriminated in one way or another mm. and we, we, we don't seem to have that empathy about mm. someone else who's being discriminated. I think it's really sad. Well, many of us do. Yeah, I know. Hell of a lot of But obviously, a person like that <laughs> yeah, hasn't yeah. lost that completely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's really sad. Absolutely. Mm. About 15, maybe more years ago, I was at the Lesbian and Gay to UC, and uh, the, we were trying to get it changed from Lesbian and Gay to LGB mm. to UC then. We wanted to change it to some other things, but. It was you know, sort of gradual thing because it was really hard. Someone from the Fire Brigade Union stood up and um, from their sort of gay group and just said, Can't you just make up your minds? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought, Yeah, 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 yeah. We're wow. saying this. loud and clear biphobia. Yeah. <laughs> and we had unison, a big, yeah. you think, quite progressive union. Yeah, yeah. No, bi wasn't there. Yeah, so. bi denial. But they actually supported, I, mean, I was from the Association of the University of Teachers, yeah. Yeah. and it was. They supported me on a procedural basis, even though it went against their policy because yeah. they were doing things wrong, and we got it through. Mm -hmm. But it was a real battle Absolutely. in this conference. So it was mm -hmm. the, this is not about bisexuals, but it's very similar. And the place where I work uh, hosts a number of associations, including the National Feminist Association. And um, I feel like it was probably two or three months ago. Um, they were ho they were fem holding a very large meeting of feminist groups to actually plan the women's day, and um, and suddenly I mean some kind of brawl erupted, and it was in the lower floor. But everybody everybody else we came out of our offices and our rooms to understand what was happening, and it was because uh, there was a trans girl who was there. And, and actually, I mean, they, they didn't want her in, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, the girl didn't behave uh, in a particularly exemplary manner, but nevertheless, I mean, I think that it is amazing that groups, I mean, that are essentially discriminated, then they exert discrimination against other groups of diversity people, and I think that we live with that every day. I mean, that's why sometimes being invisible is an advantage. Mm -hmm. And sometimes not. And sometimes yeah. not. Yeah. Because you feel so. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the kind of last part of biphobia is biphobic stereotyping. And I came up with 16 biphobic stereotypes. I was just interested what. From you guys, what would you say? Happy, what you can't Sitting on the fence. Yeah, sitting on the fence. Promiscuous, yeah. unreliable, Definitely. uncommitted, yeah. all those kinds of things. I can't be trusted. Can't be trusted. Yeah. Marriage records. Hmm? Marriage records, mm. yeah. yeah. Traitor. What's that? Traitor. Traitor. Yeah, traitor. Yeah, yeah, in the side down. Selling out. Yeah. 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 Kind of something about hiding street privilege. Yeah, like definitely, yeah. yeah. We know loads of Come on, more. What does that mean? Like, yeah, exactly. I think your example from your girlfriend yeah. suggests the dirty mm -hmm. part. What do you think that sums up? If you can go with, with, if both lesbians would see it, uh, full on lesbians would see it, oh, how can you ever go with a bloke? Mm -hmm. Couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Men it would be a different fantasy altogether, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, then it's like you're kinky, you're always available, sexually oh, available, yeah. or you bring 
in back STIs. Yeah. Happy yeah. to go with well, The gateway to AIDS for the straight people world. Definitely, definitely oh, that yeah. one. Greedy. Greedy, Greedy. Yeah. yeah. Greedy, yes, yes, yeah. Selfish, no boundaries. It's can't a phase. Make your mind up. It's a phase. Can't up. make your mind up. Yeah, can't make your mind up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the things I was, when I came out to, you know, many years ago in my 20s, um, you know, my dad went into it's a phase, you know, you've always got to be politically different, you know, it's because it's trendy, you know, but I mean, he kind of needed to say all that for me to then explain it wasn't, but um, those were part of the, by the stereotypes that are out there, it's to titillate men. I was just wondering, you know, um, people saying, well, we're all a bit of, we're all a bit bisexual, and that, in the context here, is making me think, does that make you feel invisible as well? No, it's, it, we're to, sometimes it's, we're talked about as the invi invisible majority. So the majority of us, and all you know, reports from Kingsley onwards indicate that most people have are attracted to more than one gender. But in a, as a, my, the people that define as bisexual, we're the, we're a minority within a minority. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like most people understand because they feel it, but not many people claim it. Yeah. yeah. My fourteen-year-old daughter's just come out as being bisexual. And she's getting harassed at school because of mm -hmm. it. But she goes to an all girls' school as well, right. which doesn't help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I wonder where, where the world is going to take her when she's older. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And pansexual isn't a term used at her age, I yeah. imagine that. Yeah. The only, only other things I've got here is by phobic stereotyping is um, that bisexuals need to alternate between different genders in order to be satisfied, that's a real stereotype. Mm -hmm. And also that they be, you only become bi when there's only one gender available. So in prison, I worked mm -hmm. in prison as a therapist, and there's a term called jail bent. And so the women would have a girlfriend in prison, not all, but many, but out, uh, outside, on the out, as they call it, they're straight. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you're just, just queer for that period. And that would be true in men's prisons too, mm -hmm. right? In a different way. It's a very different way. There's romantic relationships and sexual relationships in women's prisons. It's much more sexual based and abuse, more and more abuse. I think being bi and being in a relationship with a lesbian, um, the comment, or the comments that she has made is, or the big one, D don't you miss your cock? Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to leave me because you're going to get bored of me because you're going to want some cock. Yeah. And that's just, like, oh, yeah. just give it a rest. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, you're going to recognise a lot of what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. So actually then let's talk about, um, oh actually just to say that there is, as a result of all this bisexual erasure and invisibility, a bisexual visibility day on the 23rd of September. Oh, I'm busy, sorry. <laughs> 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 what did you say? He's busy. busy. <laughs> <laughs> but it really busy highlights... Busy being your essay. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> busy being biphobic. Yeah. But it really... <laughs> 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 it's a shame. <laughs> 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 it is. It is. But it does highlight that kind of real, you know, how how significant it is that, that bisexual mm -hmm. activists have even brought about this day. So now I'm going to talk more specifically about working as a relationship therapist with bisexuals. Um, but what is bisexual visibility in relationships? It's bisexual visibility is when bisexuality is openly acknowledged and accepted. Or it's being in an open or poly relationship with different genders, or it's being involved in communities that welcome bisexuals, BDSM communities, pagan communities, gendered communities that are usually very um, bi-friendly. Bi um, or it's being in a relationship with another bisexual or sexually fluid person, so what we call a bi-couple. Bi-invisibility is when we're defined by the gender of the person we're in a relationship with, and they're yeah, and or it's compromising our bisexual identity to appease the partner mm. who feels threatened. This is really common. Mm. And we'll talk a bit more about what it is that threatens the monosexual partner of the bisexual. Or it's being silenced by the biphobia of a partner, and we'll talk a bit more about biphobia in a bit of a partner. Or it's the pressure to redefine as gay or straight because you're with you know, a different gender. 
whereas when only references to gay or straight desires or past lovers are accepted and allowed, you are not allowed to talk about or discuss your sexual desires or your previous experience towards whatever gender that person feels threatened by. So the possible dilemmas that come about for bisexuals in relationships and which we as relationship therapists need to be aware of is the bisexual person losing their sense of bisexuality. Now can you, you know, really imagine what it would mean for you to be in a relationship where you lose that sense of your sexual identity. This is like a big part of who, of how you are and who you are and how you understand yourself. To have that kind of um, wiped out is pretty significant. You're losing your voice in a very significant way. It's also the dilemma is that you're having to, many times, quite often, having to deal with a partner's biphobia and, the, and their insecurities. When you love someone and you're trying to work out and reassure them, but if they're the reassurance they need, you can't give them because you're bisexual. And that in itself is what is threatening the partner. You, you're really in a kind of cornered position. It's also dealing with other people's biphobia. Your family around you, you know, your partner's family, friendship groups, obviously the, the, the queer world or the, or the straight world. And this element, which isn't often talked about, but it's missing the sexual or emotional connection of another gender. It's sometimes referred to as male-female longing, and I think this word is really accurate, and I certainly have felt that myself. You know, there can be a real longing for um, the emotional connection of a woman, which is maybe felt differently to be with a man, or the, the certain sexual experience of being with, a, with someone male compared to someone female, or, or, or the feel of someone's body, or being around someone in, who's of a different gender, and the contrast that can bring to you, um, all of these things. But, the, but longing for someone else can be present with, within a monosexual, two monosexual people. You know, you may have a gay man whose partner is tall and skinny and delicious, but he may be really longing for a bear. But, you know, so that we, we can be longing for someone brunette, we can be longing for someone of a different ethnicity. There may be all sorts of other factors and, and kind of missing different connections that we might experience with others. So it isn't just bisexuals that, that may experience this. And I think that's really important because it's often one of the, the things that threatens people who are in relationships with bisexual most is feeling that they're not going to be enough for that bisexual person. But the possible dilemma for the bisexual in relationship is feeling guilt and betrayal. They, they might feel guilt and betrayal if they have feelings for other genders. My other, the other kind of elements of, that might present as dilemmas is how someone transitions to being bisexual. Someone might always have been bisexual. Mm. I was a bisexual child. I was, you know, playing around with girls and was, knew I was attracted to boys too. Was definitely heterosexual as, as a teenager and in the young, you know, in the early 20s and then I was bisexual. Um, and hopefully always will be now. But how you transition is important. If you go from being gay or lesbian to bi, there's a really different reaction than if you go from being heterosexual to bi. You may, if you're going from kind of gay or lesbian, you're, you're seen as letting the side down, selling out, you know, losing your political edge, trying to obtain hetero privilege. All sorts of things are, can be thrown at you. Be, you know, transition from straight to get to buy, well, you'll have a whole different heap of kind of biphobic experience, you know, um, comments made. But also transitions away from bisexual identity. Not everyone stays bisexual. I've had clients come to me because they want to think about, are they still bisexual? Um, and some have ended up deciding that that term doesn't represent who they are anymore. Somebody who was um, married to a man, and uh, but and so defined herself as bisexual because she was still attracted to a woman, fell in love with a woman and left the marriage, and felt much more so strongly that she could only, only relate to women now that she yeah, she changed the way she identified her sexual, sexuality. Um, there's also kind of reconciling different attractions for different genders. So people can feel only sexually attracted to one gender, but very romantically attracted to another. There's all sorts of variants there. And there's coming out concerns. Many bisexuals are not out at work, for example. Some aren't out to family because they're hidden within a certain relationship. Um, 
and there's not feeling understood or not fitting in anywhere. So they're the main kind of dilemmas I think we're facing bisexuals in relationship. The next slide, I'm really sorry they're such boring slides. I will learn how to use them. So the possible dilemmas for gay or straight partner of bi is dealing with other people's biphobia or bi or curiosity. And I, you know, this can be as varied as, you know, if I'm with a straight man, there's a real kind of fist bump celebration that he's snared a bi woman. We're seen as, you know, really sexual, we're seen as you know he's gonna be easily up for getting a threesome or something bird. You know, all of that, all of those kind of stereotypes are there. Or if a gay man, if a bi man is with a gay man, it might be seen as turning a bi man straight. Um, or if a bi, bi woman's with a woman, it's like, um, you know, turning, well, a straight bi woman becoming, into, getting into the lesbian world. Or you see this turning a lesbian straight the other way around. I mean, there's all this um, biphobia from other people. There's also dealing with your own biphobia or homophobia for if you're gay or straight and really needing to face that. Um, questioning your own sexual feelings. I found this happened a lot in relationships I've been with. People sometimes were ready for that, sometimes weren't. Sounds nodding ahead. Yeah. And that's obviously can inform biphobia if someone isn't quite sure, quite ready to acknowledge that they themselves are attracted to more one gender. And it's feeling inadequate, insecure, and threatened. So why do why does a scared straight partner feel threatened by being a bi person? Being insufficient. That's a that's a mm. that's what I think we were talking about earlier. Thinking, oh, I don't don't have a cock, or yeah. Or, yeah. or I'm sort of a glitter or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's almost as always that you've got there's twice as many temptations almost, isn't it? Yeah. In the relationship, yeah. it's kind of this oh, well, yeah. everybody you can turn your head and take it away from me. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Not feeling they can sexually satisfy. Being, you know, for some, um, in terms of a straight part, they may, may, may um, just not take seriously the possibility that you could be with mm -hmm. the same gender partner. Um, whereas someone in the same gender might take way more seriously, than, like you're saying, kind of really being threatened by, by men. Um, so, on the back of that, we have the experience for, for many bi people of their straight or gay partners by phobia. And that can come out in these types of ways. So not telling, your, not telling their friends and family that the partner is bi, you know, really keeping it quiet, or ignoring the partner's previous relationships with another gender, being really threatened by gender-based sexual fantasy, <coughs> just not going there, not wanting the bisexual partner to be out, um, or feeling undermined or hostile when the partner refers to their bi identity, or refers to bi issues or bi experiences. Girlfriends of mine would, would, would say, you know, why are you always banging on about being bi? You know, well, because people keep telling me I'm lesbian, and I'm sorry, and I'm not. Um, but for them it was this kind of irritation, they, they felt undermined because I would say I'm bi. Um, at the beginning, they got it in the end. Um, and also believing in biphobic stereotypes. So the worst of this is that for some bisexual people, it can end up being a biphobic abuse. And bisexual people that know stats will, may know that bisexuals in same-sex relationships are way more likely to be an abusive, to be abused than than you know, gay or lesbian in a same-sex relationship. Mm. Um, so the biphobic abuses can involve these things. It's when the abusive partner plays on biphobic stereotypes to control, or it's when they threaten to out the bisexual partner. It's the bisexual shaming, like Sam's example. It's forcing sex with others or particular sexual practices or sexual acts as punishment, and usually they're gender-based in some way. It's trivialising or dismissing bisexuality and it's banning any references to bisexuality or it's pressurising the bisexual to choose a side. Okay, so my last two slides are looking at the what we as relationship therapists need to be aware of when we're working with, you know, with the bisexual person in a, in a relationship. One is the, the there is awareness of increased mental and physical health problems in bisexuals. We're more likely to drink heavily, 
uh, have substance abuse problems, we're more likely to self-harm, we're more likely to feel suicidal. We're more likely to be diagnosed with anxiety, depression or mood disorders. We're more likely to smoke, we're more, more, more likely to physically neglect ourselves. Um, and some of this, I'm sure, is because of my phobia that you know, informs that. We also need to be aware of the risk of abuse in relationships, possible risk of abuse in relationships, as I've kind of just said, and to notice bisexual erasure within the relationship. We may need to address the biphobia of the partner, well, I think we definitely need to address the biphobia of the partner we're working with, and to be aware of the possible internalised biphobia of the bisexual. And address our own biphobia, you know, not just from our first, when we first see the couple, but the language we use. And the final kind of slide, we need to acknowledge that there are multiple sexual, multiple bisexual experiences and we need to separate out biphobia from homophobia. Um, we need to explore where bise the bisexual partner is out and where they're closeted and why that is. Um, to recognise the impact biphobia can have on both partners but in different ways. We need to use terms that keep bisexual visible, so we need to be careful about not saying lesbian relationship or gay relationship or straight relationship. And notice, this is just to end on a positive, notice the positive experiences from a monosexual partner of being with a bisexual. Almost every single person I've been with who has been monosexual has said they have benefited from being with me. That it's opened up their minds to their own sexual identity. They've become way more accepting and understanding. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you.